Hello internet friends, someone asked in the comments about recommendation for a light side Jedi build and that's something I can show you now. I can show you the one that I have chosen. This is a build that is very strong solo and in a group. Uh, you're a very effective tank in a group with the caveat that your DPS is extremely low. It's, it's generally low for light side Jedi. You have to spec into dark side to really start doing some damage uh, as a Jedi at all. But this one is particularly low DPS. I don't have anything in the general path uh, that is to do with DPS. So combat with this spec is a marathon rather than a sprint. It will take you a long time to defeat things, but you will be able to defeat most kind of solo content in the game and uh, also do a, a decent enough job as a tank. Uh, so the most important thing in the build is the Sabre block skill defensive fighting we're going to need that in order to get our parry up but really we want it because it leads to improved saber block and saber block is the strongest aspect of this build the tanky tanky light side jedi build so having saber block as strong as it can possibly be is is kind of one of the core things of this build it um and and cycling your saber block is one of the key techniques for being able to uh, stay up in combat so everything is kind of geared around that for me in in my mind like making saber blocks strong because that's our defensive thing so anything that can add to that and keep us from being hit in combat is really important so also some evasion to get our evasion chance up and I don't have that quite on maximum because uh, I'll talk I'll talk why I don't but we could put an extra thing in so you can see how you could get even more tanky with this but like I say uh, I've made some concessions here and there because I do a lot of uh, solo content and I want to do a little bit of DPS I don't want to take it take, take an hour to kill everything so um i have evasion chance up to this uh six and evasion value up to 24. alacrity is good for the chance to um get kind of glancing blow up a little bit and uh, that's you know up for a tank that's pretty important the 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 two two things i have here strength strength effects block so I've got as much strength as possible and also agility is good for just dodging hits. If you don't get hit, you're not taking damage, you can stay up longer. But the re with the, here's the first wrinkle um, in this build. So I've sacrificed a little bit of tankiness for Force Cloak. Force Cloak is really important. Like if you, if as, you, as I say, if you're doing a lot of combat um, solo, then being able to get out of combat and regroup tends to be important it can it can help you get through some dungeons m much more conveniently i did run for a little while without force cloak uh, and found the game very difficult to get stuff done um but the basic force cloak uh is kind of not that useful to me without this ability uh so you get the first level of force cloak and then uh, the next stage which allows you to escape from combat that's really the game changer for kind of say so you need to get to the bottom of the dungeon and you don't want to fight every mob on your way down to the bottom of the dungeon being able to escape from combat and have a period of time where you can just run um, through the dungeon is really important i've not got like it with regards to that force run <clears throat> you could take that in order to move faster uh for that particular role but like i say this this is a build that I, where i try and balance things so is that force run, is it worth having that force run speed to get a little bit further through that dungeon or is it better to kind of save those points and and put them into something like evasion chance i think evasion chance is better you know we're gonna probably be doing more fighting than we are running so getting to the bottom of the dungeon is this getting there fast is no good if once you're there you don't have any evasion so that's what i've gone for so that's the basic stuff in the general path that i've got and like i say it skews heavily defensive um we don't have anything to add to our damage here these these are all uh, damaged uh, aspects here melee action cost so you can use melee a lot more um, you could improve your force throw to get the damage of that up you could add a, a force shockwave um, to get some more dps but 
none of that is useful with regards to what I want to do with this particular build. So those are the points that I've spent here. So shall we just go through it so you, you can see exactly what it is. So strength up to 50, agility 50, alacrity, uh, as much alacrity as possible. Then the first level of force cloak and the second level of force cloak. Premonition up to level 6 and 24. Then defensive fighting 10 and improved saber block up to 15. So that's all good. But this is the stuff that makes us really strong as a tank. And it's, it's the light side Jedi tree. And I believe if we have a quick look through, just looking at these boxes here, I think I've got everything. So... Yep, that's on max, that's on max, that's maxed, that's Saber Reflect, yep, we need that, Repost Chance. So it's pretty straightforward here. Get everything. <laughs> Get everything in the light side, light side Tree. Well, like I say, there are some skills here in the Light Side Tree that you don't necessarily uh, need to take. So, for instance, Saber Flurry. This is a kind of a uh, contradiction in that I've said I've taken most things that are tanky. But this is an extra ability, uh, an extra saber ability, and it just gives me a little bit more DPS. It's not going to do any any significant damage in a group that's going to help you hold aggro, but it's just an extra ability to use in combat and do a little bit more damage. Um, so, for instance, you could get rid of saber flurry and get that extra point of evasion chance. Uh, if you felt like, well, I really don't care at all about damage, um, I can. you can always tweak this stuff. But I'll just talk you through what all this is doing. So, parry and evasion chance with that one. Cautious nature. Perceptive sentinel. Critical hit defense. Reactive response gives you action based on uh, damage taken, I think it is. Uh, and the core thing, there are two core skills in the light side Jedi skills that are really important just the, just how i think like saber block is like the core thing in the general path the core things in here all these are a nice little little modifiers and maneuver that 25 chance per point spent to counter attack so that helps you do a little bit of uh damage as well don't have to take that get rid of that and maybe put some just get your constitution up if you don't care about damage at all. Again, doing a little bit solo, so I want to do a little bit of damage. But the two core skills in here for me are is Saber Reflect. And once you've got Saber Reflect, make it as good as it can be. So it increases Saber Reflect damage by 50 points spent. But don't forget, Saber Reflect is not just a... Uh, you know, a, an attack skill. It's a, it's a it's a defensive skill because anything that doesn't hit you, uh, that you reflect, it's like a lesser. I've said this before. It's like a lesser saber block, um, and it's it's very strong. And it makes you you can kind of have these two skills running at once, which makes you saber reflect and saber block running at once, which makes you incredibly hard to hit. You're so powerful. Or you can alternate them and have, you know, less d downtime between the period where you're really tanky and then this lull. So you can alternate those two things. Uh, but Saber Reflect, yeah, that's the really important one in the light side tree. And then the other one is um, Hermetic Touch is good for curing yourself, but the real one, uh, the real reason to get it is to get this soothing aura. Self heals are increased by 25% per point spent. Once you spend all this money in the, all these points in Jedi healing, you have this uh, huge self heal, uh, which basically pretty much heals your entire health bar. Um, really, really important for a tanky build. Uh, so Saber Reflect and Soothing Aura are the most important things here. So everything in the light side tree and those ones that I said there. Um, and as I said at the beginning, this is a build that will help you solo most things and also be good in a group. The problem with the group is the DPS. And unless you go dark side, it's very hard to generate enough DPS to hold aggro. The way I get around this is with the Guardian jewelry set. Um, which gives you an ability, it's this one down here I think, Guardian Strike, 
which generates a ton of aggro. Um, but again, it's it's something that you can only get with a jewelry set, and those are really expensive. Something you have to work towards. So be aware that this build, if you're in a group, uh, you're gonna you're gonna struggle to hold aggro um, without the without the jewelry set. There might be ways to mitigate that, and um, uh, by getting some more DPS skills, but really it's hard to imagine in a group um, being able to hold aggro unless the people in the group are kind of mindful of aggro and aggro rules. You're always going to lose a little bit of aggro because you can't put out as much damage. If you're going to be a tank, it's really hard to put out as much damage as the rest of the group is doing. So some of that is up to the group, just knowing when to ease off on the DPS, I guess. But the Guardian set really helps and you can pull a lot of aggro. Once you've got that, you have this uh, Force in Rage, which is your aggro skill. I can't remember where that comes from, but uh, that in combination with Guardian Strike are the things that allow you to hold aggro. Um, the Heroic set I, c I kind of used to use as, uh, as, a, as a just a thing that would give me a lot of base stats and, and it was helpful with dps when i didn't have to worry about aggro but it became really annoying sw switching between different um jewelry sets and ultimately like the heroic set and um and stuff didn't didn't make that much difference to the dps so i kind of got rid of that and i just run with the guardian set now um with regards to other stuff to do with the character that maybe complement this build um, I, I guess you want to be looking at for your shirt. Where is it? Glancing blow, really. Um, you know, I've put glancing blow. It's all glancing blow on the on the lightsaber and on the shirt. Shatter point cloak doesn't have a socket, does it? So <laughs> it's not much we can do about that. So yeah, I mean that's the build I'm running with at the minute. I'll just go over it one more time, as I say. This is, uh, this is a build that is not right for everyone, um, but if you want to do a bit solo and be useful as a tank in a group, it's a good one. So hopefully you've got all that and it might be something for you to consider. Like, so I'm always intrigued by these skills in the middle, like Forsake Fear, Meditative State that focuses... Ooh, a meditative state that focuses the force to nearby party members and yourself to regenerate action. I can imagine that being really helpful in a group. Um, and cloud minds for kind of getting rid of aggro when you don't want it. Um, increase the area of duration of mind trick and cloud minds. You know, you can do a lot more than this build allows you to do in terms of like crowd control and minimizing who's attacking your group. So, like, if you were more of a group-minded player, I, I want to be a tank, but I'm primarily going to be running with a group, then you kind of start looking at these skills, wouldn't you? And, you know, if you're going to do more solo, but you you can sacrifice a fair number of these skills in the, in the light side path in order to unlock some more DPS. That's, a, that's another option like Saber Shackle and things. I mean, certain of these skills you have to unlock in order to get to Soothing Aura, if you want that, because... Uh, but you don't have to take them all. I think I, I think you can definitely get rid of Saber Flurry. I think that one, and Repost as well. Um, you can get enough with the other ones. So, yeah, I know this is a bit of a waffly one, but the thing is, with, with build videos, I always feel like... The best thing to do is just experiment. There's no right or wrong answer to builds. Um, everyone has their own different preference and no one is wanting to do the same thing. And I'm personally someone who, like I'll look at builds online, I'll look at guides, but I'm always thinking, and particularly when people give it like, you know, this is the build that you need to use. I just don't believe that. I don't believe that. I believe there's a lot more reasons to use particular builds than people give and like this is the most effective build well who cares if you want to role play a a jedi who is in this game i mean like just take those skills you want to do you want to do like a 
a more of a passive force guy who's not he's more like a Qui-Gon Jinn character sod all that and just take these these ones just for the hell of it just for fun you can I, and I think you can be effective whatever <laughs> but you know people people ask about these build guides and I guess because I'm doing videos it's it's natural for people to like oh what's your build but I mean my I don't know my advice would be just pick what what works for you and what's fun for you in in terms of what you want to do anyway i hope you're all doing well like i say a very waffly video i was i was hoping to start this and and it'd be really it'd be really like oh, i don't know more this is what this does and this is what this does i mean it's pretty obvious what they do <laughs> just 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 choose choose what works and experiment like i'm always experimenting when i when i get a new item or something i'll i'll switch things up and pick an enemy and then just see see how effective you are this is how i've come up with the with the with the working theory that glancing blow is not actually the best thing to take as a tank i think agility is <laughs> uh, i know it's not the received wisdom but if you fight the Akle at the bottom of the Gian Ocean bun bunker, and you you with two specs, one one spec glancing blow, one spec just stack agility, and the agility is the one that stays up more effectively, then that means the received wisdom is wrong, right? Or there's something about that particular enemy that dodging is better than blocking or something, but there the, the can always be. There can always be differences, I suppose. But anyway, I'm kind of waffling about it now. But my advice would be just go with what go with what you find fun. All right, see you later, guys, and uh, thanks for wa watching. Uh, walking, watching. Don't know what I'm going to do now. I have a can of coke and I'm going to sit down. There's rebels out here. Look at this guy. What build are you? Huh? That armor never appeared in the flipping movies, did it? Where's that? Where'd you get that armor from, eh? Can I slap him? Slap, slap, slap him across the face. No reaction. I'm not even sure he's a human. Be a robot under there. Ooh. Hey, still in the limelight. <laughs> I like that. There we go. All right. Stop waffling now. See you later, guys. Bye.